In this video, I'll show you how to create a proposal for an active campaign project and why you shouldn't create just a proposal, but something else instead. I'm Jason, growth specialist at Wildmail, where we help make active campaign even better for Europe based businesses. Let's check it out. So let's get right into it. If you are working at a marketing agency, especially a marketing automation agency, you've probably had to create proposals in the past. Uh, typically, this will come after your discovery call with a prospect. They've expressed interest in your services. Um, you know, they're looking uh, to potentially work with you. They think maybe uh, the uh, automations or uh, solutions you can build with Active Campaign will fit uh, their their current uh, challenge or current pain point, and so. Uh, you're going to send them uh, a proposal. And that's probably the word you've typically heard used for this. Uh, I'm going to share now why uh, we would encourage you to create a statement of work instead. And uh, it may sound just a bit like uh, semantics. But this is what I used at the marketing automation agency I worked in in the past. And the reason is a proposal tends to be a bit more fluffy and vague, whereas a statement of work is the professional version of the proposal that covers at a minimum project specific activities and deliverables, a timeline for those deliverables, and the cost of delivering that solution to your uh, client. Uh, again, typically sent after a discovery call using the information you've gained from that conversation with them. And it's really going to help uh, one with your uh, authority uh, and number two, building trust with your clients and three, your overall professionalism uh, as an agency. So. So let's dive into how to create a client-centered statement of work. Now, this piece here, this is something that uh, resonates uh, very much with us here at Wild Mail because we want to build authentic relationships uh, with our customers. And uh, the same should go for anyone working at an agency serving clients. Uh, a statement of work, this is also one of the, the bigger differences, a statement of work is uh, going to focus more on the, uh, on the clients Whereas a proposal tends to uh, speak a bit too much about I or me or the business side of things. Here's what we can do. Here's our experience. Um, that's that's typically what ends up in a proposal. Uh, but the statement of work, a client centered statement of work that I'm encouraging you to to create here is first going to recap the history of the prospects uh, business. So you're going to describe in your words, your understanding of the client's business and their current situation. Now, you may have some sales training or sales experience uh, and uh, or maybe you've read Never Split the Difference, something like that, where uh, it's good to be able to mirror and, and say back to the person that you're speaking with uh, in your own words what you've understood them tell you. And so it's not redundant. It's OK that you're taking information and repeating it back to them from uh, the discovery call. You're probably going to go over a few things you've already covered because it's going to let them know that you've listened and understand uh, their history, and then number two, their their current uh, pain points and challenges that they're facing. So number two is mirror the problem back to them. Uh, repeat it back to them uh, in your own words, your understanding. And you'll notice this is client-centered in that our first two uh, sections of the statement of work are focused on the client. We haven't even mentioned uh, any of our solutions. We haven't talked about ourselves yet. We're speaking about the client uh, and really letting them know that we understand based on the discovery call where they're at and what they're struggling with. And so only then do we go into number three, where we can share a high level overview of our proposed solution to their problems based on uh, what they've shared with you. And then number four, really get into the detail uh, that will be involved in implementing the solution. Uh, you know, make it very clear. Don't make it overly complex. Um, you know, uh, describing it in detail and being clear doesn't doesn't mean to uh, bog them down with unnecessary details or unnecessarily complex explanations. It doesn't mean go into the ins and outs of active campaign necessarily, uh, unless they're a highly technical prospect. You typically don't want to go into uh, too much of the technicalities of what you'll do uh, if it doesn't help them understand the benefits and how you're going to relieve them of these pain points. OK, so that's one point there when you're describing the work. It's, don't talk so much about, uh, uh, you know, features and the intricacies of the tech. Um, really describe more how you're going to solve the uh, the pain points um, and the benefits and value you'll be able to deliver to them. Then in number five, define what's not included in the scope of the project, um, just so you have a shared understanding of what won't be done. 
Uh, and then they can always come back and um, you can have that discussion, but at least you're having it ahead of time. You're being clear and transparent with your prospect about uh, what work you're expecting to, to do and not do. Uh, and this can really come into play when you have licenses for certain software. Um, you have the subscription for Active Campaign. who's gonna pay that. If you're designing emails for them in the campaign builder uh, or in automations that you have to pay for, who's going to you know, um, uh, pay for those images? Will they be included or excluded? Uh, so make sure you cover those in step five. And after step five, we're going to set expectations for success. What does success look like? Specific measurements as to how success is going to be measured between uh, you and the uh, client so that you can both have a shared vision of what the desired outcome is before going into the project. This level of transparency is really going to, going to help build trust with this potential client of yours. Um, you're covering all of this ahead of time and you're eliminating the risk of these surprises, both with exclusions and expectations for how, how success will be measured. By covering these ahead of time, you're really um, covering yourself and providing a better experience for the client. Then you're going to share the timeline again to eliminate any surprises and uh, you should have already gotten some of this information on the discovery call with them, you know, kind of how long they're expecting or when they would like to have the solution by, uh, and then you can estimate it and give them that feedback. Um, and I do say here, estimate how long the project will take. Of course, things always change, stuff comes up, um, but do try to be as specific as possible, uh, you know, include a, a specific time range that if all goes as planned, you can expect it to be done. Um, and then that again, helps with uh, trust and helps them make a decision uh, when they have all of the information at hand. Step eight, we're gonna drop the investment. So we're getting closer to the end of the statement of work now. Specify the cost of the project and when the payment is due. Again, this is another area we, we don't recommend making overly complex. Yes, there are payment plans, um, if you can get it, you know, paid in full up front, great. Uh, it tends to simplify things for, for both uh, parties, but just specify whatever the cost of the project is and when the payment is due. And, and then that way, uh, when it's in writing here, uh, again, no surprises for yourself or for the client. Uh, you can lay everything out here. It means you've put in your time and done due diligence uh, thinking through the project um, and they won't have any surprises, you know, with you throwing a... a an invoice at them when they least expect it. And then finally, give them a guarantee. It's optional, uh, but highly, highly encouraged. Even if you're just starting out, uh, you can offer a guarantee of your performance to mitigate the client's risk and, and increase the likelihood that they will decide to work with you. And again, this helps massively with, with tr building trust up front. Um, and like I said, even if you're just starting out, there is a guarantee for you <laughs> that you can find a, or craft and, and use. Um, even if it's just that you will work with them until the desired outcome that you've defined is accomplished, uh, you know, and, and you won't charge them beyond the costs that you've already set out. Um, whatever, whatever that looks like, that's a typical one, uh, continuing to work until a certain uh, KPI or certain goal is achieved. Um, but there's always, there's always a guarantee that you can offer uh, that will, you know, be within your expectations of your own business. Um, and that will help your client feel more comfortable in entering the engagement with you. So once you've created your statement of work, uh, there are a bunch of different softwares you can use. Uh, I'll show you a few here, Propositify, uh, Pandadoc, uh, send it using uh, HelloSign, which is now uh, Dropbox Sign. Uh, these are all great to have them signed. You could also just send it over as a plain text uh, email or plain text doc. Uh, keep it simple, <laughs> not overly complicate the, the engagement. Once they're ready, you can send over uh, the document for them to sign. Um, but these are some good softwares to uh, use for that. So if you have any questions uh, around creating a proposal for active campaign uh, or a statement of work in this case, uh, just drop them in the comments below. We'd be happy to help answer those for your specific uh, situation.